Morning, folks. Let's do a permaculture walk. I haven't been out here in a while. Been recovering from a migraine, a substantial migraine episode. <laughs> I have vestibular migraine, which can be a challenge. But we all have challenges now, don't we? So, let's take a quick walk around. Let me find my cane, my staff, whatever this thing is. I use it as a prop, as a crutch, as a walking tool, as a pointer. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Let's see how we're doing. No way to start a video with your car in the first scene, especially permaculture types. That's not the way to do this. Try to do this early in the morning when the light's appropriate. We don't have tons and tons and tons and tons of competing shadows. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. We're headed in the direction with the camera right now that is pointed towards west. About a half a mile more or less in that direction. We have a wildlife management area, a conservation area. At basically, basically from here into the Lake George Oconee National Forest, that area is all unpaved. So we are part of that ecosystem. We are part of that ecosystem. Now every permaculture environment, every permaculture homestead or farm or property is going to be a little bit different. Our goal here was to make ours as natural as possible to fit it in this environment. We are quite rural, quite rural, rur rural. So this isn't going to look like Beverly Hills. This isn't going to look like a, a, a nice neighborhood in Nantucket. This is going to look like a very nice neighborhood in the rural part of remote central Florida. I am still trying to decide what level of paths are appropriate. As many of us who get into the permaculture world realize soon that we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> it's a learning phase. It's a learning process. It absolutely is a learning phase, learning process. And the whole time, I think Bill Mollison, one of the co-founders of the permaculture movement from Australia in the 70s, said that uh, design is an ongoing process. It's ongoing. And it's based on, I can't get the word it's right, it's based on <laughs> everything that we've learned, everything that we see, everything that we observe, everything that we put together. Uh, mistakes or lessons, I prefer to call them lessons. They're mistakes if you don't learn from them, but I try to learn from them and then pass on what I've learned, so they're lessons. All right, so initially we were pointing to the west. Now we are pointing, right now we are pointing to the southeast. I'll move my camera around a little more. And of course, based on the sun rising in the east relative to the earth, we are now pointed east. We are a little more than one acre. This is about where our acre stops, more or less. The back behind us here is a scrub area. Nice scrub, Florida scrub area. You can see some oaks, palms, etc., etc. And there is a three, about a three acre wetland back there, a pond slant wetland. I was hoping to beat a lot of the shadows. When we get back up front, or we point the camera in the western direction, in any direction but pure, pure straight east, it'll be easier for us to see. Anyway, we put up a high fence here when we first started. One of the things we wanted to do was to have a little area that was somewhat protected from the deer. We have deer and feral pigs here that uh, well, let's just say they have their own ideas and ideals 
and creative instincts and um, <laughs> there we go. To our left you will see our wind and sun air dryer system wind and sun clothes dryer system. I told you it's early, it's it's six o'clock ish. Six o'clock ish in the morning ish. And I'm not quite awake. The noise you hear is intentional. We are going back into an area where there are lots of critters, snakes, gators, chartreuse carburetors perhaps even, stuff Darwin doesn't recognize but oh hey Toby thanks did you did you talk to the alligators let them know we're coming through I like to do the noise thing because I want these critters to know we're coming back here I don't want any surprises so I've got pieces of uh, old metal making the paths back here so that the reptiles can feel the feel the vibrations Reptiles can feel the vibrations. Don't want to startle anybody. They know we're here, it's a little bit easier. They can get out of the way, they can go this way, they can go that way. This is where we access the pond when we need irrigation water or whatnot. I'm, I haven't been back here in a while. Ooh, all the spider webs I'm, I'm clearing. Sorry guys, I don't like to clear spider webs. But sometimes if we need to get through, that's what we need to do to get through. I guess this is going to be a long video. I'm never sure exactly what I'm going to do. But you can see through the trees, there's quite a bit of wetland environment here. And we are so, so, so very lucky. Because we have a scrub. We have a wetland environment. We have a pine and oak forest on one side. We have an oak and hickory forest on the other side, primarily. So this is, I mean, <laughs> we are blessed. We are completely blessed for an acre plus with a couple of more acres surrounding us. Actually, quite a few more acres surrounding us where we, where we are remote and isolated but close enough to people and neighbors. If we need something, we help each other. When the hurricane blew through, when the big Irma blew through, hit us pretty hard here. The neighbors who primarily keep to themselves, they were all ready to help each other, and I think that's, that's important. This area here has quite a bit of, as you can see, grapevines. Grapevines, wild grapes, elderberries. Got one elderberry up at the house. There's quite a few back here where it's moist. All right, I think everybody back here knows we're coming. I don't think I'm gonna take us into the thick part of the forest on this video. I think I'll do that another time. We'll see, we'll see, maybe. We'll see. We will see. Trying to learn how to hold this camera some more still. As a migraine and vertigo guy, I really appreciate it when people are doing videos. <clears throat> if they hold the camera still, because if they move the camera, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Because I can't watch my own videos. <laughs> they provoke a substantial mi migraine and puke fest. Yeah, I said it. That's nasty. All right, I know that's nasty. All right, let's go through this way. Oh, I didn't show you my compost area. I'll have to spin the camera around. So if you are a vertigo sufferer like I am, don't <laughs> this part of the video is going to be good for you. I'll try to do it slowly. Bamboo ahead. Planted some bamboo. No, these are not runners. These are clumpers. Most in the tropics and subtropics are clumpers because if runners were down in these areas, it would be nothing but bamboo forever. Got peach over there. Kumquat. winged sumac that are growing on its own native doing real well here you can see right directly in the middle of the camera planted some cassava cassava 
And there we see our compost area. In this area, I've got all kinds of crazy stuff growing on its own, all kinds of natives. Behind that big pile of natives is some lemongrass. Yeah, lemongrass. Got a nice avocado here, Brogdon avocado, which should fruit in July. Calamondin, these calamondin uh, citrus, they fruit all year from what I understand. Slow growing, slow ripening, and they will provide all year. We had them fruit one year. This year they're starting to fruit again. Calamondin, we got a bunch of citrus. When I say we have 30 citrus trees, we may have 50. Many of them popped up on their own. Uh, many we planted. All right, let's go back into the high fence area. Deer fence area here. Oop, spider web in the beard. Yeah, hoo-hoo. I know you guys belong here too. You spe all the species are cool. Just don't hang in my beard too long. Don't bite me, please. I mean you no harm. All right, Hamilton Hoak, Garden of Eden. Ah, the mosquitoes are joining me. So this is going to be a challenge too. I got I to gotta go fast because if you slow down, let the mosquitoes catch you. All over your hands, face. Yeah, we have mosquitoes. All right. So I'm going to have to pick up the pace a little here, which means the videos aren't going to be as fun. Loquats, native plums, winged sumac, mulberries, native persimmon, native blueberries back in here, dog fennel, crepe myrtle, miscellaneous banana patch, Peach, <laughs> peach tree, peach tree, oh, what else do we have here? More mulberry. And behind this mulberry is our barometer oak. This is the oak that started growing when we stopped mowing. So it's been, <laughs> mosquitoes in my mouth. It's been, mosquito stop. Stop. I have to talk about this oak, so give me a break. You can catch up with me and fight me in a minute. But this oak is probably about 13 to 15 feet high. In 2017, when we moved here, we stopped mowing, and that started growing. So we call it the barometer oak for that reason. Barometer oak. More bananas. What are these bananas? These bananas here are dwarf namwa that I got from Oliver Moore up in Gainesville. To my left, apple. That's an Anna apple that we just passed. I've got two crab apples growing with it. Hope they can, hopefully they can pollinate with it. This is a native Chickasaw plum. Got figs to my left. Blackberries, crepe myrtle. Pears to my right. I got Baldwin pear, Baldwin pear, Florida home pear, Hood pear. I got two sand pears. Haven't had any fruit yet. Um, well, I had a fruit. Had one of them fruited. <laughs> Raccoons got him, I think. Uh, what do we have coming on here? Oh, looks like we have little bitty strawberry guavas there. Got a mystery citrus here. Simpson stopper, and right underneath it, a Simpson stopper baby, which I'm proud of because. It grew from the mama. That is so cool. So cool. So cool. Fig. Several fig. 12, 15 figs. Uh, who's meowing? Is that you, Toby? Come on. 12 to 15 figs in the area that we've planted. Got lots of uh, hyacinth bean. Lots of hyacinth bean. Of course, there is our necessary, somewhat necessary, I suppose satellite internet system thing unit dish there's another pair straight ahead i know we can't see because of the light this is a tough time the sun's coming up the shadow's going to be crazy <clears throat> lots of these naturalized interlobium monkey ears nitrogen fixers grow very fast early succession species got a lot of them everywhere let the, i let them do their thing i threw a bunch of seeds around planted more Try to get some fertility growing early on in this in this farm garden, permaculture farm garden. Another baby strawberry guava. Got a bunch of them, maybe ten or twelve. Got four pink guavas, which don't don't like the cold weather as much. Hey Tobe, you coming through? Hey buddy. I just jerked the camera around. I know. More citrus through the fence. Blackberries. 
Blackberries haven't fruited well. I've got some Mysore raspberries up front. They're doing okay. Um, gave us fruit now and again. Berries seem to be tricky. I've got uh, native blueberries that are growing and doing very well. And some of the ones I did not plant. They just popped up. But one tree I do want to talk about that's doing very well, and I think it's underappreciated in Central Florida, is I think it's called the Scarlet Plum. Red Scarlet or Scarlet Plum. I forget. I've got it written down. But I can get a month to two months of productivity. May and um, about half of June, I think, out of this tree in very few problems. There's an, occasionally you'll see a bug interested, which is good. If I never, ever, 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 ever saw any critter that wanted to eat this, I'd be like, uh, are these poison? <laughs> are they toxin? Are there too many poisons on them? But that's just, just enough bother to let me know that the, that the critters are slightly interested, but very few bug problems of substance. No fungus, mold, no vitamin deficiency. It seems to grow well in the soil without any amendments other than compost and doing the natural thing. Passing under the big mulberry. That big mulberry I've spread around the community a little bit, giving cuttings to people. More mulberries to the right. Uh, planted grapes all over this high fence area. Um, grapes as in scuppernogs. Scuppernogs? Am I saying that right? I, yeah, I'm not a true southerner. Grew up in California, spent a lot of my time in the south, but I can't claim to know anything true about the south <laughs> because I'm not a true southerner. Hello? All right. Um, muscadine, basically. Muscadine, scuppernogs, what have you. Mosquitoes, give me a break. I know I slowed down, but give me a break. Thank you. All right. Uh, Satsuma tangerine. This Satsuma tangerine. The Satsumas are supposed to be the most cold hardy and can do well in Central and North Florida. And this will be the first year that, that they're fruiting. Planted those. One of the first trees we planted here back in 2017 fall. So that's it. That's it for the high the high fence area. I've got pink guava back there, orange cat, uh, monkey ear, interlobiums, mulberries, pink guava, strawberry guava, loquats, Suriname cherry, Walters verburnum, Simpson stopper, lots of figs, peaches, nectarines, American beautyberry, which is a native. Mexican sunflower, I've got na uh, native plums, flatwoods, and chickasaws, as well as scarlet plums. Let's see if I can get through this fence without completely destroying. Oh, get through the gate without destroying myself. For the integrity of this video shoot. Come on, Toby, you coming? Come on, you slowing us down, bud. There you can see the solar panels up on the house. Hey, look at I'm multitasking. I'm trying to let the cat out, keep the mosquitoes away, and show you a good picture of the <laughs> solar panels. Toby, you wait, you just you, you are really taking a long time, pal. What can I talk about while Toby's making me wait? Got little avocados growing there against those posts. May avocados. May avocados, which is a weird name because they don't they don't ripen in May. It would have been nice if they Okay, Toby, come on. Come on, buddy. You're just, you're just sitting right at the gate there. You're not coming out. You're not coming through. Come on. There. Force the issue. All right, bud. Which is interesting because Toby can slither through the through the fence, at, as, as you probably saw earlier. All right, so let's go to the front. I was going to do a five-minute video. I can see this is going to be a 15, if not 25-minute video. Oh, sorry about moving the... Moving the... Um, I really should have put gloves on. Or, or mosquito camouflage, which I didn't do, which I didn't do. All right, heading to the front. Heading to the front. Got good water catchment systems here. Rain barrels to collect water off the, uh, off the roof. The roof. And distribute to different areas. That blue one there that you see in the middle of the camera, middle of the view, that goes back to um, 
a mini pond and a micro pond. It collects rainwater off the roof and feeds the pond. How, how cool is that, huh? What do we have here? Oh, oh, let's go inside the gate. I'll show you this. Let's get in through the gate here. Directly in the front of the picture is a fire bush, which took a pretty big... Took a hit during the winter. These are nice little fiery, peppery flavored fruit berries. Got several of those. Those are really a zone 10 plant. So I know it's going to get beat up here. I've tried to give it some protection, some forest protection. This is a sarsaparilla tasting plant called a root beer plant. Wasn't, wasn't sure if it was going to do well up here, but the one plant that I put up here two years ago, ah, I think it's doing well since there are now about 10. Morning, sweetheart. Morning. All right, she's a star. She's in the movie. Woohoo! All right, as I mentioned earlier, I think when I was in this area, all permaculture pomicul homesteads and garden farms are going to be a little bit different, not just because of the um, species that are in the area, <clears throat> but also because of the neighborhood itself. Where do you live? If I come in somewhere and 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 do what would be considered a really neat design, really helpful design, sustainable design, but it stands out so much that it isolates and alienates the other people who live in the area, or the other species who live in the area, eh, not so good. Not so good at all. So we've tried to blend in as well as we can, so when people come by, like, oh, this is cool, and it's not like, yeah, what'd you do? Turn this place into California or turn this place into Canada or, or what? So it just may not work. Certain areas of Florida, you got that Miami or that Boca feel or whatnot. Yeah, and that works. But here we're trying to stay rural. Trying to blend in as, as, as well as we can. Being consistent with the landscape, environment, the species, the neighborhood, community, the culture, and all the culture. The culture of the species, culture of the people. You got it. 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 A lot of citrus up here. We found a lot of citrus growing in the woods. Most of it is sour. Uh, sour rootstock is, is, can handle freezes a lot better than a lot of the, the uh, citrus fruit we're trying to grow and trying to grow and eat. So inevitably, when a, when a rough winter hits the area and some of these citrus trees die, die down to the roots, die back to the ground, what's left is the, is what's left is, uh, the root system of the sour orange. And they come back and they grow and produce sour, sour uh, fruit. And it's sour. Some of them are battery acid sour. <clears throat> and I know some hybrid off and on, and they're not all exactly the same, but... <laughs> One of the ones we have is battery acid sour. Now we mix it, use it, we use it, uh, we sprinkle it on salads and use it for various things. We use the fruit. But the, we also found, we also found some very sweet tangerines that were growing in the forest all by themselves. When I say forest, I'm not talking about Western Montana, or the Rockies, in eastern Utah, or whatnot. But I am talking about an acre that's basically untouched. Looking at this over here, this is still our property. Our property line goes to just the other, to the right of that big tree. And this, this is very nice. I can walk through here every morning and get, every morning or afternoon, and get some inspiration. Anyway, back in this area, about halfway back, there's a nice, there's a good amount of citrus trees. About four or five in one area, and they are all sweet tangerines. About every other year, they give us, give us some nice sweet tangerines. So I took those seeds, as you can imagine, 
took those seeds and grew some citrus trees. I've got uh, some of them are about three and four feet tall now. And uh, as some of you all aware are aware, we are going to turn this property over to a family eventually who can continue to steward the land, continue to grow food, cultivate, regenerate the species in the area and help to undo some of the bad the bad doings in the past that some of us have, have done. But we will be turning this over. Probably sometime... I think our fantasy target is the spring of 20... Um, Spring of next year, what what year is this? This is 2022, right? <laughs> Gosh, that's when you know you're getting old. You're like, how old am I? What year? What year was I born? What's uh, so I'm 61, so I was born in 61, so this would be 2022. <laughs> yeah, all right, 2022. And here's how we come into our property just past Toby there. That path is not really the road, it's not maintained, it's just a path that goes to other properties back there. And that, that path is actually on our property. So anybody who goes back there has to have our permission, basically. But, you know, it's, been, it's, it's grandfathered. It's like hundreds of years old. But the county does maintain up to our mailbox here. Nice little sand and clay road. Anyway, this was my very impromptu. <laughs> Improvisational, off the cuff, first time out in a while. Good morning, permaculture property tour. Got goomies up here in, in the front. I forgot to mention goobies. Lots, I planted a bunch of goomies that I also got from Oliver, from Oliver Moore up in Gainesville. Goomies and mulberries and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, we're out. I hope you enjoyed it. Love you all. And as I said, we're going to be trying to put this up for sale in the beginning of 2023 next year this is <laughs> this is 2022 june so in less than a year hopefully we'll have this up for sale um we are doing a i'm doing i'm, I'm building a plant database so whoever takes over the reins of this will have written information on the plants i did uh, my certifying permaculture project here so I've got all of that written down as well like I've got that project to hand that uh, project paperwork and all maps etc to hand to the next people who come in surveys and all that goes with that uh, and everybody wants to know about price well we don't know next year the, pro the housing market is crazy the housing market is crazy earlier I did a, a review online of six different sites and the property came out at $90,000. That is not what we would be selling it for. Because we, uh, there, there's no way they would have the information on our solar panels, on all the fencing, on all the improvements, uh, on the manual wells. We have two wells. We put in, we put in uh, another manual well pump, Cadillac top-of-the-line bison stainless steel manual well pump access to water we have a very good water table here so all, none of those things would would have been factored in for a price today so, but that just gives you an idea uh somewhat of an idea it would be it would be over a hundred thousand dollars um maybe approaching 130 if we sold it today don't know do not know it's all speculation anyway video's gone 20 minutes i think at least if not 30 <laughs> I don't even know if this will load. <laughs> we got to go. Bye.